seeking solutions. A KSN News 3 special. They're the problems that are impacting our hospitals. And we've got people who are really living in a state of crisis. Our law enforcement. We deal with the same people over and over and over and over again. Our community, struggling with how to handle homelessness, substance abuse, and mental health. Our systems need to be much more robust than they are because we're busting at the seams and we can't keep up. Local leaders asking questions. We have to be willing to have really tough conversations, really honest conversations. Developing new initiatives. If we could have services in place that take care of people and address the needs they have, it will save tax dollars. Taking steps towards collaboration. In the long run, it's going to save us money. It'll cost us something to get it started, but in the long run, uh, it's a solution. Hello, I'm Hunter Funk. Throughout the next half hour, we'll take a look at how Wichita and Sedgwick County are working to address the challenges of mental health, substance abuse, and homelessness. Community leaders agree these often intersect, impacting our economy, our crime rates, and our hospitals. But finding a solution, it always hasn't been a collaborative effort. For years, local leaders say despite multiple agencies all dealing with the same concerns, there was not a lot of cooperation to find a solution. After probably a year of kind of fighting back and forth, we said we are all saying the same thing. That frustration created an intention to collaborate. How do we work together uh, and pool our resources and then get other entities, some of the nonprofit entities and those type of things, uh, to come together as one whole entity to start addressing this? The Mental Health and Substance Abuse Coalition was born. Formed in 2019, the coalition involves the sheriff's office, police department, city, county, nonprofits, hospital, and business leaders. There are people who need inpatient care, who need housing and shelter, who have issues with law enforcement, who need outpatient services. We need to figure out a better way to do this. Wichita has many resources to combat these issues individually. Comcare, the county's mental health authority, provides stabilization, detox, sobering, and outpatient treatment. Law enforcement from Wichita and Cedric County have mental health training for officers and deputies. Is anybody in here? Some have specialized crisis intervention training or work with the homeless outreach team. Hello. ICT-1 began in 2019. The city and county work together to provide a mental health professional, law enforcement officer, and a paramedic to respond to those having a mental health crisis. We've got some different bandages. Also, there are dozens of nonprofits and community groups along with private businesses that play a role in addressing at least one of these issues, working alongside the coalition. One recent collaboration is the opening of the studios at Humankind, a 54 unit housing complex that helps people transition out of homelessness. We're just getting people together uh, and really starting to think of this in a big picture way. As the coalition considers multiple options for the community's future, one that has risen to the top is a campus-based model. The idea is to develop a one-stop shop where people can receive many different services. Now, one community that has had a lot of success with a campus system is in San Antonio, Texas. I traveled there to see what's changed in that community. San Antonio, Texas. It's known for its Riverwalk and the Alamo. Population, 1.4 million. This city may be three times larger than Sedgwick County, but roughly 20 years ago, they were facing the same challenges South Central Kansas is today. They were able to turn it around and now Kansas leaders are looking to do the same. In the early 2000s, San Antonio had a growing homeless population. Encampments were starting to grow. The jail in Bear County was at capacity and considering an expansion. They brought in an expert that said you need to build another thousand beds onto the county jail. And there was a lack of mental health services. Why are we waiting for them to be in crisis? There's a lot of homeless people that aren't in crisis. In 2006, community leaders started investigating new ways to address the issues, along with Bill Grehe, philanthropist and CEO of the gas company Valero. They researched 200 different homeless shelters and the root causes of homelessness. We really don't address the root causes of their homelessness, which is mental illness and addiction. Grehe led the fundraising effort and helped found Haven for Hope in 2010. He doesn't want to give you a handout. He's a businessman. He wants to give you a hand up. The more than $100 million one-stop shop was built with 60% private funding and is located just one mile from downtown. Downtown San Antonio. This was a vision. There happened to be acreage in a really great location that honestly was full of abandoned warehouses where 
folks already were who needed services. The 37 acre campus includes a coalition of nearly 70 separate organizations. Their own organization with their own mission, their own funding, their own boards. They choose to be here to serve our clients. There are two main parts, the transformational campus and the indoor outdoor courtyard. Many clients start in the courtyard, a safe space to sleep. They receive basic services, including meals, showers, medical and mental health care. We believe that housing is not something you earn. It's a right for everyone, but it looks different for everyone. And we do that here. The transformational campus provides stable housing, nearly a thousand beds in three dorms, men's, women's and family. Clients must agree to a 90 day treatment program, an individualized plan that can focus on job training, case management, mental health counseling and substance use classes. The facility also has a daycare, classes for kids. They do really great art. And a shelter for pets. Yes, mama. The average time here is about four and a half months. That time gives people an opportunity to get back on their feet and address their individual challenges. According to Haven for Hope, in the last 11 years, more than 5,000 clients found permanent housing. And after one year, 89% of people that left the program with a housing placement did not return to home homelessness. Now just across the street is the Restoration Center. Leon Evans is the man behind this mental health initiative. We started with no money, no vision, you know, no nothing. It began in 2007 as a detox center, a place for police to bring those arrested for public intoxication. And later it evolved into a facility providing psychiatric care, substance use services and general health care. There are 16 beds in the 24 hour crisis unit a 28 bed detox unit and a 16 bed sobering unit. Since 2008, more than 50,000 people received help through the center. The county also reports that between 2007 and 2020, jail bookings dropped by half. And while there are still challenges to overcome. Addressing chronic homelessness is a high priority. There have been many successes that are helping the community learn and grow stronger. Wichita and Sedgwick County leaders agree they don't want to simply mirror the model in San Antonio, instead develop their own plan. That would also include involvement from the criminal justice system. Now, some local leaders checked out a model in Oklahoma City during a visit in October. That community has what's called a diversion hub. It helps individuals with mental health or substance abuse issues navigate the court system. The hope is to keep offenders out of the cycle of jail and unmanaged treatment. And still to come, we look at the challenges that lie ahead for creating a new model in Wichita and Sedgwick County, including the financial burden. This is a place to get on your feet, to get you out there in society to make it on your own. We introduce you to those who are seeing success from a campus-based model. That's still to come. As local leaders continue to look into the challenges our community faces, homelessness, substance abuse and mental health treatment, they're also seeking out what has worked in the Haven for Hope model in San Antonio. I was able to sit down with those who have experienced the program firsthand, including a Wichita native. My best friend died right after we graduated. I started drinking heavier. The drinking led to cocaine and I had untreated mental health I didn't take seriously. Kevin Longhenny says these events, along with going to jail for a drug felony and having his probation revoked, eventually led him to a dark place when he attempted suicide. Uh, called 911 and told them to bring a hearse because I'd be dead by the time they got there. So when I woke up in ICU, I said it's time to just get sober. After getting out of the hospital and finishing his time behind bars, he lost the job he had before his arrest and he was homeless. I knew I wasn't good, but I didn't realize how, how much it grabs a hold of people. I found that out the hard way. It was about that same time when Haven for Hope opened. Longhenny stayed at the courtyard and eventually moved to the transformational campus. And when I got here, my case manager believed in me until I started believing in myself. He is now 11 years sober and a peer support specialist who talks to those who are starting the program much like he did. I've had suicide attempts. I have a state jail felony. I've been locked up, been in uh, mental health wards. All of those things, uh, I don't feel like I'm any different. 
than you guys are. Stephen Holiday is currently in the program. I'm a diehard Chief fan, Kansas City Chief fan. Originally from Wichita. It's my hometown, yeah. He moved around, but then lost his apartment and ended up on the street. Two months under a bridge, homeless. But when he heard about Haven for Hope in San Antonio, I found out about this place, came here and got on my feet. Holiday says the program is changing his life for the better. This is a place to get on your feet, to get you out there in society, to make it on your own. I mean, what more can I ask for? I'm blessed. You know, we serve an awesome God. That's all I can say. Both say this program was the help they knew they needed. And one, they hope Wichita can make a reality for the others who are struggling. It's change, change is possible, but it's not possible if you give up on a person. Here in Sedgwick County, the latest count from 2020 found that 56% of adults of the homeless population reported having a severe mental illness and about 41% reported dealing with substance abuse. Now some report both and some of those individuals who aren't managing their illnesses find themselves falling into a cycle of crisis, hospitalization and homelessness. And still to come, we break down the costs of those individuals who are considered high utilizers and see a study by Wichita State and what it says about how much they're costing our community. That's next. When individuals access um, crisis services, those come at a really high cost. They are bouncing from organization to organization to organization. Many community leaders I spoke to speak of the desire to help individuals in crisis, but they say there's a real dollars and cents cost to the way our system works now. Taxpayer dollars end up paying for services for many people stuck in the cycle. Wichita State researchers wanted to find out just what that cost is. Now, WCU study investigated high utilizers. These are people who suffer from mental illness or substance use disorders whose needs are not being fully served through the current behavioral health care system. Researchers looked at the costs for Extension via Christie St. Joseph, Comcare, and the Substance Abuse Center of Kansas, or SAC. These individuals are regularly cycling through the emergency department, crisis services, and detox and sobering, and are often uninsured or underinsured, and they end up back on the street without fully managing their illness, and they start the cycle all over again. Now, the WSU study investigated just what that costs our community. These are complex individuals. These are people who have decades of trauma. And they just circle and cycle through all the different levels of care in our community and in our state and don't ever get exactly the right level of care that they need because it no longer exists. With a growing behavioral health crisis, in 2015, the Kansas Health Foundation gave Extension Via Christi a grant to study these high utilizers. The goal, find the gaps in services and find out how much they're costing the community. Wichita State University's public policy and management staff did the research. Researchers analyzed data from 2015 to 2018, studying 519 high utilizer cases from all three organizations. We're seeing them in the hospitals, we're seeing them in the mental health centers, we're seeing them receive substance use disorder services. The first finding, 25% were high utilizers of more than one organization. There is a high crossover of these individuals. Next, the cost. Between the three organizations, the utilizers received nearly 56 million dollars of care over the four years. 17 million of that was paid through taxpayer funded services like Medicaid and Medicare, other grants and donations from the public. Breaking down the cost per person in 2018, the median cost was more than $72,000 for each patient at the hospital, $20,000 for Comcare and $1,000 for SAC. And what it has clearly indicated and shown to us is there are huge gaps in care. The study found that once a high utilization was released from care. They're feeling good. They discharge from the hospital. They don't want to see a mental health professional the same day or the next day. It also found that wait times to transfer patients to longer term facilities were too long. We're lucky if we can get them to hold that thought long enough to get them transported from here to a facility. Two months, never mind. Since the study was released in 2019, it's prompted more collaboration. The three organizations have come up with a shared crisis plan to more effectively get high utilizers help. It also kickstarted the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Coalition. If we could have services in place that take care of people and address the needs they have, it will save tax dollars for the state and it will save money for our hospital system, which then in turn frees up space for other people who need emergency services.
The coalition is continuing its work and considering several initiatives. That could include a centralized area for services to come together, finding a space for calm care expansion, and piloting new programs such as a system that shares patients information between organizations. Now stay with us. Still to come, how the challenges leaders faced in San Antonio could lead to solutions for Wichita. Community leaders in Wichita say they have the benefit of learning from challenges other communities face. Those who helped develop Haven for Hope in San Antonio call it a 17-year overnight success, saying they had a lot to learn along the way. The first challenge for the San Antonio community was pretty obvious. We had no money. It's expensive. It's constant fundraising. Finding the funds to first build the campus. Oh my God, you know, we can't do this. And then keep it operational. Getting people to buy into it, it was a slower process because it hadn't been done before. But it was thanks to a key player. It takes a leader, and that was Mr. Bill Grehe. The former CEO of the gas company Valero lobbied and used his connections to raise money. More than $60 million from the private sector, the rest of the $100.5 million from government collaboration. The organization says he's personally donated more than $34 million to support the organization and its partners. Looking at day-to-day -day operations, 56% come from state, local, and federal funds. 36% percent from private contributions and 8 percent from community nonprofits and partners. So once the funding was taken care of, next came a long term challenge, taking individual organizations. We're going to fill out some forms and helping them work together. They were justifiably upset. They already had their own businesses. They were already serving their own clients. It took being honest about what wasn't working in their current plan. Finding that you're doing something bad or wrong or inefficient or ineffective, it's a good thing because then you work on it. And for organizations that specialize their efforts to understand another group's focus. I may do something well, but I can't do everything well. Listen to learn and not listen to respond. An essential step in considering a model never done before. One they're still working on. Whenever you're collaborating, it's not the easiest thing, but no one can do this by themselves. As for the location, that part was an easy site selection. Vacant warehouses near downtown provided the space they needed. Still, there are challenges that will never be entirely solved. Homelessness is with us, and you know, there have been homeless people since the beginning of time, I think, and, and we will always need to have systems in place. The advocates in San Antonio who met up with local leaders here say they're impressed with resources and the level of collaboration in the Wichita area, but that the community still has a lot of work left to do. In late September, the city and county held a joint meeting to discuss some of that work and lay the initial groundwork toward a new system in our community. This is a lot to tackle. Working to transform a community, it's no easy task. First comes funding, a major obstacle for construction on any campus-based system. Just the campus itself will probably cost us 12 or 15 million, that's just for property. Could a large donation from a business or individual get construction started? It's a no-brainer, we need to, to help with this. We need that individual here in, in Sedgwick County. As for the long-term financial sustainability, it would benefit from donations, but also rely on financial support from the state, federal, and local level, making collaboration key to help build meaningful change. We have a lot of people doing incredible things, but are we really moving the needle? Next, ComCare Mental Health Services need to be larger to handle more people getting help. We are using every bit of square footage in this building. Adding in a 24-hour medical service. Someone who comes in who's highly intoxicated or has minor injuries, um, instead of taking them to the hospital, um, they could receive that medical treatment in-house. But space alone won't address the staffing issues. If we build a bigger facility, we'll be even in worse shape. We have to be able to pay them better than McDonald's down the street. I mean, they are caring for people um, at their worst hour. And buy-in from the community may be an uphill battle. How do we get the private sector engaged? Because um, businesses in Wichita, especially in the downtown central core, will certainly benefit. Still, no final consensus that a campus-based facility is the right option. I think we need to 
prioritize? Is it the campus or is it mobile mental health? And if a campus is built, where? And would one campus reach the entire community? Or are we still going to concentrate this uh, in one area of the city? Uh, it needs to be close to housing. It needs to be close to transportation. It needs to be close to the other services uh, that's offered. This is a system-wide change. The challenge is we are trying to change a system that has been operating for years and years and years, and so that's not going to change overnight. Now stay with us as we take a look at the next steps for the coalition and local leaders. That's up next. So I've been talking to Wichita and Sedgwick County leaders. What I've heard is consistent enthusiasm. There's been a consensus that something needs to change in our community. Some tell me they're excited that now appears to be the time for action. We're about two years ahead of where I thought we would be because we gave ourselves about three to five years and we're in year three of our strategic agenda. I hope uh, that before that my term is up, well, we can really see some ground moving and we can see some buildings going up to do this. We can all take up this flag. You know, we can all be the champion of this. This isn't about, well, it's your idea or your idea. It's all of our ideas. By the end of the year, the Wichita City Council and Sedgwick County Commission plan to meet again. That's where members will hear recommendations from the Mental Health and Substance Abuse Coalition with ideas for next steps for the governing bodies. The county approved a $15 million expansion to ComCare and is now working through logistics. The coalition also keeping an eye on the legislative session that starts in January. A state regulations or funding could impact the next steps. We'll continue to cover the new developments. You can find our in-depth reporting on our website at ksn.com. We also have resources listed there if you or someone you know needs mental health or substance abuse treatment or help combat homelessness. Our reporting has been a collaborative effort of two members of the Wichita Journalism Collaborative, KSN and The Journal, a print and digital magazine published by the Kansas Leadership Center. The Wichita Journalism Collaborative is an alliance of seven media organizations and three community groups formed to support and enhance local journalism. Funding for the travel to San Antonio was provided by a grant from the Solutions Journalism Network. Thank you for joining us.